the use which uh, the communists make of democracy. And then uh, when they seize power, the effectiveness with which they have. Some must die and shed their blood today. You might need more ammunition than you got in that gun. I haven't always been a good man, but in my waning years, I've tried to be a better man. Living a life of never-ending adrenaline rushes. That's my location now if something happens, over. And then you come back to the whole hum of civilian life. It's. It's different. It's hard to get a handle on. It's been a long day. This is what victory is in Vietnam. Tomorrow we get to do it all over again. Was that a hard transition for you? Yeah, to this day. <laughs> In December of 1968, the 26th Marines were staged on the Ant Hill, an ad hoc base south of Da Nang. Kenny Woodall, my company, 3rd Battalion, was armed with an M16 and Argus C3 camera. And uh, the South Vietnamese occupied half the hill, and we occupied the other half. And uh, it, it was all jungle around there, but they had some fields at the foot of the jungle, and there was always civilians going up and down this mud road, and they would work these fields. Alert to this threat, aware of this danger, why free men fight in the Republic of Vietnam. The company was then stationed afloat, headquartered across two Navy ships the USS Ogden and USS Tripoli. And uh, this is all muddle because you'd be, on, uh, you'd be on the ship two days. Then they'd stick you in God knows where you were at. You might be there two days. Then they'd send you back. You might be there five days. They'll send you back out. You may be there seven days. And this was nonstop. So... The times are on the side of peace. 12 days into 1969, the Marines were assigned to Operation Bold Mariner. The objective, cleanse the Batangan Peninsula of Viet Cong guerrillas. Uh, we got red smoke on it, where the hell are you at? The whole area was a tidal flat, and what was dry during the day at night, the only place you could sleep dry would be on a paddy dike. After two weeks of pushing through wetlands, the company reached a minefield. We get up in these sand dunes and it's just white sand as far as I can see. And uh, at some point in time, I heard a muffled explosion. Then I saw a guy come walking through our area and he was crying and he said Copeland's gone man and he never said another word he just kept on walking Randy Copeland a 22 year old from Rockmart Georgia had stepped on a landmine his mother sent me a picture of him in his coffin he was wearing his dress blues Tomito, give me a smoke screen Another guy came walking down the line and there was a huge explosion. Just a rush of wind with sand in it and it uh, blew David and I to the ground. David Reamer, a 21 year old from Mentor, Ohio, had absorbed the blast. His eyes were staring at the sky and I knew he was dead. 
I looked down in his chest and there was a hardball size hole right square in the middle of his chest and it was bubbling and he wasn't breathing anymore. Then a helicopter came in to pick us up and I didn't have severe injuries. I just had shrapnel in my calf, my lower leg and my upper thigh. At some point in time, they asked me to go to the fantail and identify the dead. I went to the fantail and there was sailors there wearing hip boots with fire hoses and they were washing off dead Marines. They never fired a shot in anger. Weeks later, Woodall left the Ogden for one last firefight in Vietnam. Behind him, the ghost of Vietnam. Life and death over there was millimeters, inches, feet, and yards. Standing here instead of over there, it's just time and place. How does that make you feel? You made it out and so many other guys did. Guilty. Why me? Why do I survive and they don't? Never, it never leaves you. And then it is the time to remember. But tomorrow there will be something else. In Vietnam, there always is. In honor of the dead, let us stand. Hey. All right.